Hello friends. In this video, we will study the differences between the synchronous and asynchronous data transmission methods. So let us start with our topic. Whenever we talk about the communication between two components, we say that one component is sending the data to another component or we can say that data transmission is taking place between the two components means exchange of data is taking place data transmission is taking place between the two components this data transmission it can be of two types serial data transmission and parallel data transmission now when this type of transmission is taking place uh, like serial and parallel data transmission when the sender is sending the data to the receiver so there is a need for synchronization between the sender and receiver that when the data is starting from where the data is starting at what position the data is ending and what's the capacity what's the speed of that data transmission for all this we need the synchronization so based on the synchronization the data transmission is well, uh, is of two types synchronous and asynchronous data transmission so here we will study the differences between these two types synchronous and asynchronous data transmission that what's the differences between the two methods so let us start with it The first and the most important difference between the two methods is that in the synchronous data transmission a clock pulse is used and uh, two signals are used one is the clock pulse and second is the data signal so this clock pulse is going to indicate the receiver that from where the data is starting and at what position the data is ending so here in the synchronous method a clock pulse is used and uh, a data signal is used whereas in the case of asynchronous only one signal is used that is the data signal so first difference we can say that first basic difference is that in synchronous two signals are used whereas in asynchronous only one signal is used now as we are talking about the synchronization between the sender and the receiver so in the case of synchronous mode the sender and receiver they will be having a uh, clocks single clock is there and that clock is common between the sender and receiver whereas in asynchronous no clock signal is required the internal clock of the sender and the receiver will be used so we can say that the second difference is that sender and receiver should have synchronized clocks before data transmission so here and uh, external clock is required and in the case of asynchronous the sender and receiver they do not require any clock no synchronization is required so we can say that it's the second difference in asynchronous does not require So in the asynchronous, no clock is required, but in this case, a parity bit is added to the data before the transmission. Suppose we are transmitting an 8-bit data, so to that 8-bit data, a parity bit is added 
The parity bits mean start and the stop bits are added. Start bit will indicate that from this position the data is starting and stop bits will indicate the ending of the data. So the difference between synchronous and asynchronous is that the starting and the ending of the data is indicated by the clock pulse in the case of synchronous and in the case of asynchronous it is indicated by the start and the stop bits. Okay. So here a clock is required and that clock so should be synchronized whereas in the case of asynchronous no clock is required whereas we are adding a parity bit. So we can say that in synchronous the third difference is that an external clock is required. We can say external clock is used. Okay whereas in asynchronous the sender and the receiver they are going to use their internal clocks <clears throat> also another difference is that that in the case of synchronous as we are using in the case of synchronous as we are using the external clock so for uh, transmitter and the receiver there is a common clock okay so sender and receiver have common clock Whereas in the case of asynchronous, they will have separate clocks because they are using their internal clocks. So for transmitter, there will be a separate internal clock and for receiver also, it will have a separate internal clock. Next difference we have is that in the synchronous method, the blocks of data or frames are send it means they are uh, whenever transmission of data is taking place then blocks of data or frames of data are transmitted but in the case of asynchronous only one bit is transmitted at a time so here bit by bit the data is transmitted whereas in synchronous blocks of data is transmitted Next difference is that the synchronous method it is having a very high speed of transmission so it is used in cases where uh, the speed required for the transmission is fast means faster transmission we require in that case we use synchronous method whereas asynchronous it is speed of transmission is very slow so here used for high speed transmission next difference is that in synchronous because uh, we are using uh, separate signals two signals are required one is the clock signal and second is the data signal so synchronous it will require more circuits in that more hardware is required so we can say that synchronous method is expensive method whereas asynchronous is this cheaper why it is expensive because it require hardware what we can say more hardware is required whereas in the case of asynchronous less hardware is required next difference is 
talking that in synchronous method the less hardware is required and in asynchronous uh, in synchronous uh, more hardware is required whereas in asynchronous less hardware is required also in synchronous only hardware is required no software part is required because we need only the clock signal and the data bits whereas in the asynchronous we require both hardware and the software because we have to add the start and the stop bits also we have to generate a parity bit so in the case of asynchronous software part is also required so in synchronous we can say only hardware is required So for asynchronous, we require both hardware and software. Next difference is that in synchronous, because we require the clock pulses, synchronous pulses are required. Whereas in asynchronous, no synchronous pulses are required because no clock pulse is used in this method. So here we can say synchronous pulses No synchronous pulses are required. It uses start and stop bits. Instead of that, synchronous pulses here, start and stop bits are required. Next difference is that in the synchronous constant time interval should be there because in synchronous we are transmitting blocks of data and frames of data so there uh, should be a constant time interval the clock pulse is also a periodic pulse here so here we can see that synchronous data transmission it is used in applications when there is a constant time interval between the data so here the time interval is Whereas in asynchronous, as we are transmitting a single bit at a time, one bit at a time is transmitted. So it can be used in applications where the time interval is random or irregular. Now in synchronous because blocks of data frames of data is transmitted so there is no gap between the data whereas in asynchronous one bit at a time is transmitted so there is a chance of a gap between the data because start and stop bits are there again if the next byte is transmitted then that byte will also have start and stop bits so there is always a start and the stop bits between two blocks of data whereas in the synchronous blocks of of data are transmitted at the same time means simultaneously they are transmitted so there is no gap between the data whereas in asynchronous gap is present Now, if we talk about the applications or the examples of synchronous and asynchronous method of communication, then for synchronous, we can uh, give the example of a chat room or video conferencing. All these are types of uh, synchronous data transmission where blocks of data because in chat room when a person is uh, talking they are um, in a, a group of uh, people they are talking to each other so that is the kind of communication taking place that is uh, in a large number whereas in asynchronous uh, the examples can be letters emails these type of communications come under the asynchronous method because in this uh, in letters we are uh, writing the data and uh, means number of letters can be sent there can be a time interval between it whereas in chat room and video conferencing the data means blocks of data is transmitted between the people okay 
so these are examples of synchronous and asynchronous data transmission so here we studied about the differences between the two methods that uh, the synchronous method it the major difference we talk about is that in synchronous data transmission we have a clock pulse and that clock pulse is synchronized for both the receiver and the uh, transmitter both transmitter and receiver they share one single clock whereas in the case of asynchronous no external clock is required transmitter and receiver they are going to use their internal clock for all the operations and uh, no synchronization is there that is why it is called asynchronous method so uh, we studied all the differences between the synchronous and asynchronous method I hope that this topic is clear to you. Thank you.